Okay, so in this talk, I'm going to give definitions of one-sided limits. So it's going to be the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. And I'm going to basically compare it with the definition of two-sided limit, which was in a previous video. Let me just write down this the left-hand limit. Okay, let me first remind you what the definition of two-sided limit says. So here's what it says. Here, we have this. So it says, limit as x approaches c, f sub x, f of x equals l. So f has to be defined on the immediate left and the immediate right of c. And it says that this is true if the following holds. So for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x which are within delta of c, either delta on the left of c or within a delta distance on the right of c, we have that fx is within an epsilon distance of l. Okay? Now, with the left and right hand limit, what we're trying to do is we are trying to consider only one-sided approaches on the, on the x. Okay? So, what what will change when we do the left hand limit? What will be different from this definition? Hmm? We approach C from the left. We approach C from the left. So what part of this definition will will change? Uh, from the fourth line. I mean this line. Yeah. This, this line. Oh, for all x with hmm? within C distance. Within, yes. So what will no, change? Within delta C distance of C. Hmm. So what will change? Uh, we will not have C, comma, C plus delta. So this part won't be there. We'll just be concerned about whether when X is delta close on the left side of C, Fx is. Will we change this one also to only include the left? Uh, or this one will remain as it is? I think it will remain. It will remain as it is because we are just saying as x approaches c from the left, fx approaches it. We are not claiming that fx approaches l from the left. Okay, let me make a number line picture just sometime. We'll do a full geometric understanding of the thing later. Right now, it's just very thing. So the function is defined on the immediate left of C. Maybe not defined at C, it's defined on the immediate left of C. We don't even know if the function is defined on the right of C. Okay, and what we are saying is that for any epsilon, so any epsilon uh, around L, you can find a delta such that if you restrict attention to the interval from C minus delta to C, then the F value there is within epsilon distance of L. Now the F value could be epsilon to the left or the right. So we take left hand limit on the domain side, it doesn't have to approach from the left on the other side. Okay, let me just uh, so write down the full definition. You want to keep this on the side. You see this? So what it would say is that for the definition would say for every epsilon greater than zero. There exists. By the 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 understanding of how what this definition really means will come in a in another video, which you may have seen before this or after this. For all x. Now we should also change it if you're writing it in this form. So how will it read now? For all x. So, will you put x minus c or c minus x? I'll be x minus c. Oh, c minus x. c minus x, mm -hmm. because you want c to be bigger than x. You want x to be on the left of c. So, what would this read? Uh, I e o. I e x is in c minus delta to c. Okay. What do we have? We have the same thing. So this part doesn't change. 
Hyperx is within absolute distance of L. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay, now why do I keep saying this thing about uh, the left, the L approach doesn't have to be from the left? What's what's the significance of that? Why is that important? It's important because we don't know uh, whether the function is decreasing or increasing at that point. Yeah, so if the function is actually increasing, then, then L thing would also approach from the left. And... Uh, and if it's uh, decreasing, it would approach from the right. And but sometimes it's neither increasing nor decreasing. It's still true. It approaches from one side. So that's a little complicated. But the, the way the way this comes up is that when you are dealing with composition of functions, so when you are doing one function and then applying another function to that, and you have some results with one-sided limits. So let me just write this down. So if you have one-sided limits and you have composition. So you're doing one function and then doing another. You have to be very careful. To be very careful when you are doing one-sided limits and composition. Why? Because if you have here like f of g or so, so if you have g of f of x, as x approaches c from the left, fx approaches l, but not necessarily from the left. So if you then have another thing which says as fx approaches l from the left, g of that approaches something, you just have to be careful that that when you compose things, the ones the sidedness could change each time you compose. I read a composition of the function out. So well, not not in this video. We'll do that in some in another video. So that so that's something we'll see in a in a subsequent video. But this is just something to keep in mind. So when you see that, it will ring a bell. Okay, let's do the, what other side is left? Right. Right. So by the way, you probably already know this if you've seen limits intuitively, so I'm not stressing this too much, but left hand limit is really the limit if as you approach from the left. Okay, so it's, you're not moving toward the left, you're moving from the left to the point. Okay, and right hand limit will be approach from the right to the point. So it's right moving from the right. So the words left and right are describing where the limit is coming from, not the direction in which it's going to. So now you can tell, just tell me what, what will be the corresponding thing. So what we need F to be, to make sense of this notion, we need F to be defined where? Um, yes, right on the immediate right of C. Okay? That is, if it's not defined on the immediate right, it doesn't even make sense to ask this question whether, the, what the right-hand limit is. Okay, so how will that be defined? For every epsilon larger than zero. So the epsilon is, is what will come by here. Right? It's, it's, the, it's the interval on which you're trying to trap the function value. Uh, there, there exists, exists epsilon no, delta delta uh, greater than zero such that for all x with okay, let me x bring out. minus c greater than zero. So the, the the full the general one is for all x with zero less than mod x minus c less than l because you want to capture both the intervals. Mm -hmm. In the in this one, the left hand limit one, we we just captured the left side interval. Now in the right one, we just want to capture the right side interval. So as you said, it's zero less than x minus c less, less than delta. So in the in the picture, the functions define say c to c plus t, and you're really saying you can find a delta such that if x is in here, so actually, it's this is so it's not including c. It's it's all the points on the immediate right of c. We have the absolute value of f x minus l hmm. is less than epsilon.
So FX is. Are we here? We have everything. Yes. So is we have all, we have we have both of these here. Mm -hmm. So so you see what's the main difference between these two and the and the actual definition. The the for every epsilon there exists delta. The the the, the first, second, and fourth line remain the same. It's this this line where you're specifying where the x are. That's different. In the in the two sided thing, the x are. You have it here. Mm -hmm. the two side x could be either place. For the left hand limit, the x you just want x here, and for the right hand limit, you just oops want I want to close the outer parenthesis. You want just want x in C to C plus delta. Okay.